Um, okay, uh, hi Nathan. Uh, hi. Thank you for joining us today to speak about um, our services. Um, no worries. So yeah, I mean essentially, so I, I'm the performance analysis for our our company, and it just I just want to get an understanding of how we can uh, help you and what services we can provide to sort of um, elevate your performance and essentially just aid aid you in getting better and improving aspects which you maybe have problems with. Um, mm -hmm. So start off with by you know what what sort of what's your experience with like performance analysis in any sort of area? Um. So I haven't really with a coach done any official performance analysis, such as like yeah. watching a video and watching points in the video and kind of doing feedback like that. But I have had coaches sat behind the court during games. And yeah. obviously yeah. during the game, they're allowed to coach. So there's like in-game performance analysis going on there. Um, mm -hmm. But then also after the games, then we'll like talk about it. But not so much in terms of tracking this is the kind of shot you played when you lost that point or these certain areas or things like that so not in depth yeah so you just sort of uh, just a general sort of sense okay this is what you might be doing you haven't really been almost like shown okay so this is like almost like broken down in okay so this shot resulted in like so many outcomes mm -hmm. you're not you not had anything like that yeah not that before Okay, okay. Um, so from there, like I know, I know you spoke, um, you spoke earlier. Um, do you, what what sort of issues or problems, um, whilst player, do you, do you like is there anything that you think, oh, I've got a problem here, and that, and via analysis that might help to identify first, then you know help improve like, from training. Is there any issues you've sort of encountered what, like when you're playing? Um, quite a lot in the rear backhand corner. Um, yeah. It'll often a lot of players end up. They'll turn their body and hit an overarm shot so that the racket's above their head. Um, but the other option is to turn and hit with the backhand. But obviously, yeah. when you turn, then your back is to the net and you can't see where they are. Um, also, when you're still facing forward, you can hit and then move into the court quickly because you don't have to then turn your body back around. Because if I've turned here and hit, then I have to turn before I can come yeah. in again. Yeah. So you lose vision, you lose speed. Um, and typically, you can attack if you go like that, but you yeah, can't yeah. really attack if you go the backhand yeah. the back because of the amount of time you lose even if you play an attacking yeah. shot you can't play it as powerfully and mm -hmm. if they get to it and then an example would be if I've hit a cross court backhand smash and they get to it and play but they just lunge sideways and play a straight block over the net then yeah, yeah, yeah. the flight time for the shuttle for them between it leaving their racket and crossing the net is quite short because they just hit a straight shot yeah, and they're yeah, yeah. in the middle of the court and I've given them the speed from my smash. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've hit it cross court from the back all the way to their middle. I have to turn and get all the way over across there to the net on the other side. So the combination of the lack of speed and the lack of vision allows them to really take advantage. Um, yeah, so it impairs your, almost, almost like it pairs the rally, so it puts you in the back foot kind of. Um, yeah, in like multiple ways. Mm. Okay, yeah, because I think um, yeah, as you said at the back, it's, it's the round ahead shot, isn't it? That you that you previously mentioned. Um, yeah. And, and for, like, yeah, so from from that, obviously, from when we last talked, I've managed to like get 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 hold of your footage and have a and have a good look at that and sort of break it down. And this sort of leads on to the my, my next sort of point um, or sort of interest is um, you you. Got, you because you said you haven't you had one specifically, but you were, like you were really aware of okay on the backhand I tend to lose points or mm. I'm not as successful um, than I am when I go around the head, um, and from the analysis that I did, like that yeah that was it was that was really really clear I think um, mm. you had I think it was I think it was like 20, 25 
shot he played on the backhand. So that was either a clear, I broke it down to a clear smash or a drop shot um, from the rear of the court. And, you know, you had, you had nine winners from those 25 shots compared to mm. when you played around the head, you played 13 shots and you had 10, win- 10 winners. So the margin of, you know, how successful you were, um, yeah, it really showed. And, and that's what I'm curious about um, is, you know, you were already aware of that before, you know, I, like I'd even looked at any footage or, and you hadn't really mm-hmm. done it properly. Is that something that you, so like, do you almost make a mental sort of note when you're playing? So when you go to play that backhand, do you make a note and think, oh, like I played the backhand, oh, I might, I might, during this rally, I'm, I'm, I'm on the back foot now and I might lose this point. Do you, do, are you thinking that could you play that shot or? Um, so I have a bit of like a long answer for it, basically. Um, a lot of kids when they start training at maybe like 10, 11 years old aren't strong enough to hit it from one back of the court to the other back of the court so they can't clear it Um, which means if you can clear it like just forehand, if you can clear it you're on a big advantage and then when people get a little older and they can all clear it if you can put someone on their backhand people are a lot weaker and then they can't clear it from there. Okay. So one of the biggest tactics as a junior would be just play it to their backhand. So you'd you'd bring them into the net so they play at the front and then open space on the court for the backhand and you'd play them on the backhand. So yeah. Yeah. as a kid, one of the biggest weaknesses was if you don't have a backhand. So I spent loads and loads of time developing a backhand instead of going around the head. Okay. So I'd just go like that for every shot. And it meant I was almost a little bit impenetrable. If someone played to my backhand, I could play that clear. It wasn't a problem. I could play all the other shots that you might want to play. So they couldn't even stand at the back and wait for the clear because I could play everything else. So yeah, it almost, by being good at that, it became a weapon. But yeah. then when everyone gets older, they develop that backhand just through getting a bit stronger. And then you want to be going around the head. And I didn't start going around the head because if you go around the head, you typically, you want to slice it that way to go cross court or you want to slice it that way to play it straight. So because I hadn't practiced those, but everyone else had been practicing them, Mm -hmm. then if I ever tried to play them in a match, they'd go wrong and I'd lose the point straight away. So I'd think okay. backhand, because if I went backhand, yeah, yeah. I was at least in the rally for one more shot if I got yeah, it over the net, yeah. as opposed to just wasting it by going around the head. So, mm-hmm. like, you typically you'll play the backhand because you're late on time. Like, if it's up in the air, you can get underneath it and it's fine. Yeah. So it's often when you're pressured. So mm-hmm. the added pressure combined with having to go round produced loads of errors. Um, so the lack of ability to slice it well made me go back and a lot then in the later ages of juniors towards like being a young adult um and then because it was so ingrained in me to play the backhands and everyone else was then getting so good at the slices and I wasn't even when I recognized it as more of an issue it kind of became a thing of if I start now which I started a few years ago learning the slices when I'm really put under pressure if I've not been practicing it, I will make a lot of mistakes playing those slices. And it almost was a safer bet to go on the backhand. So when I'm playing, I'm there thinking, can I get there early enough to play a slice and play around the head without it hindering me by just losing the point, if that makes sense? Yeah, totally. So so it's like it's it's a long route to the answer of what I'm thinking when I am going backhand. But if I'm going backhand now, it's because of kind of feeling like, oh, I have made a few mistakes playing those slices and round the head. Yeah. I prefer yeah. not to risk that. I prefer to play backhand and stay in it. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be, that'll be what's in my head when I'm doing it. The backhand yeah. will be this is to survive the rally and to stay in the rally and try and turn it around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it's really, really, really um, interesting, really, to say, I think, because from the, from the um, footage that, that, that I had um, use of, 
Um, oh, what's the frozen bit? Just tell me, mate. Is it frozen? So, you got, is it, can you hear me now? Is that good? Yeah, 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 I can, yeah, I can. Yeah, good. cool. Um, let me know if you're not. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, from, from the footage, it, I mean, sort of the conversion rate of, you know, continuing rally and, and then that shot ended up in a winner. Um, from, from the outside perspective, obviously, like, you know, I know you said there, you, you sort of relied on your backhand because you weren't, you know, you almost behind in your sort of your, your training, your sort of experience of playing around the head. But from the footage, from the outside perspective, it looks like, you know, almost you've, you've, you've really worked hard on going around the head because the success rate was far more than it was playing mm -hmm. the backhand. Um, I just think, yeah, so going, so for training, um, do you, I know you said you sort of, you have, you, you've had some analysis, but you have not really looked at it in depth much after performance. And so almost what I'm, what I'm trying to um, get across is, would, would not like, um, having the analysis whilst training. So you look at, you know, look at your, your the game or look at a, a certain rally where, you know, you might have played, you know, several backhands or around the head or whatever shots. Do you think that'd be a beneficial, like having a performance analysis where you have with your coach or, or a service like us, um, where, you know, if you're going to work on something, you feel as though, because as you said, you know that, okay, this is a slight weakness. Do you reckon that performance analysis would really sort of help to identify the problem and then inform an intervention okay like mm -hmm. okay so i don't know my my footwork there wasn't what it should be is that is that something that you think would be beneficial to you yeah i think being able to both in tournaments and training being able to look at a certain time when you've decided to go backhand instead of round the head or yeah. when you've gone round the head instead of backhand and picking up the data and seeing where's their shot come from when i've made that decision what percentage of times have they, let's say, they've played a straight clear from their forehand to my backhand corner. Have I gone round the head or have I gone backhand? What percentage is it better for, like, round the head, what percentage is better for backhand? And then have they played it from this other place this time when I've gone either backhand or round the head and kind of seeing which times it is like... When the flight's short, you can be forced. Mm -hmm. But when the flight's a bit longer, so if it's on a diagonal, you can often have the time to get round the head. Um, but then, again, if if it's a straight shot, and then this is the opposite of what I've just said, if it's a straight shot, they have to play it up to get it past you because it has to go over yeah. you, and then you can get under it and play round the head. And if it's across, they can play it past you flat, and then you have to go backhand. So... Yeah. It can be a combination of where they play it from, what flight they play it with, whether it's a loopy one or a flat shooting one, um, your position on the court, um, and then as you said about footwork as well. So if my footwork has been either sloppy on that shot or the shot before, then I'm later, and then that makes my court positioning worse. Yeah. And then I do have to go like backhand because I'm later on it, and then the shuttle's lower, and so they all like kind of tie in and being able to plot them all in, and then look at okay that happened here, the data says that happened here, the data says that happened there. Um, it's something that you can't really recreate just with a chat. Like it's it, yeah. you need the data need to that, actually investigate. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, again, yeah, it's, it's just like, yeah, it's, really, it's. I think, you know, from previous experiences of it, it really, like, use of analysis, like, no, especially notational analysis, it really gives you, like, a really clear and, like, objective, okay, this is, you know, here's a problem, um, you know, here's, like, like, how impactful it is on the outcome. And mm. I think it's really, like, it really helps to um, give, sort of give you an understanding of, of your own game and, really aids improvement is in okay I now know that's you know this is a really because I think it's sometimes um you can almost get you have an understanding great I've got a weakness here but you may not um fully understand the extent of it so let's so mm -hmm. unless you have that actual data that says okay you know this is this is the severity of it you're, you're unsure 
Um, mm. So I think it's yeah, a really, really beneficial thing. And I, I know you spoke to Reese, our psychologist, about it, um, talking about, um, again, going back to the footwork, uh, how he mentioned how um, before uh, before tournaments or just in training, you you know, because you know that weakness, you really focus on get like mm. the footwork patterns of getting into the right um, positions to play like around the head. Um, how, like yeah, so I just, I just want to sort of uh, touch on that a little bit. Um, mm. How how does uh, yeah, how how do you sort of utilize that? How do you uh, yeah how do you use that? So because of the um, given like what I was saying about when I was young doing so many backhands, the muscle memory for me, no matter how much I train around the head. As soon as I get into like deep water, my muscle memory just goes backhand. Yeah. So unless I'm really strongly enforcing the round the head in training prior to the tournament, and even on the day I'm practicing those footwork patterns to get me used to reacting like quickly and then going round the head, then my body just at times when I need to doesn't go around the head so i'll use the footwork patterns of and it's just the start of the movement so it's not doing all of it and getting there and playing it it's just okay. i don't know whether new love's explained much but like the split step um, yeah, if you've yeah, heard that before heard that, yeah yeah so it's with the split step to go around the head you push back with us you push and you step with your left yeah. to go backhand you push and you pivot okay yeah. so yeah. as soon as their shot gets played and you've split you don't have the time to start the movement and then go hmm, backhand around the head which yeah. i do it's the second you split you're either pivoting yeah. or you're stepping and if you start to pivot then you can't really step and they'll it might be hidden away in some clip somewhere where I started the pivot but I've wanted to step and then I'll kind of awkwardly kind of like wobble backwards and play around the head yeah and it'll look really ugly and it'll probably go yeah, quite wrong yeah. there'll be yeah, one or two in there yeah yeah I and think, yeah, that'll think, be what's was, happening yeah, yeah. Okay. it'll be I've yeah. started the pivot but then I've wanted to go around the head so I started and then I stepped with the left and it's left me very square rather than turning the body and pivoting yeah, yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's quite split step based, yeah. that pre like preparation pre-tournament uh, for making sure that I can get around the head. It's, I'll just practice the split, the step and like the pivot, um, just to make sure that my feet are doing the right thing and they've practiced doing the right thing maybe 50, 100 times before I then play and then they go on court and they'll hit a shot and because I've just been doing it my body just does it yeah yeah but it's almost a it is a bit of a band-aid um it's the, like the more I do it the more the body gets used to that being the muscle memory yeah um but it's still the number of hours that have been put in on a backhand compared to the around the head yeah, it's still it's still so yeah. much outweighing it that it's quite a necessary thing for me to be doing um, before tournaments. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I mean, it's like what our technical advisor will probably um, talk about a little bit as well. Um, and it's sort of, so for, for my sort of role and my, what I'm sort of looking to do is analyse your performances, um, you know, and like from these talks and then come up with the intervention and part of that intervention is, is what we, we were just split, speaking about, so like the offer positions and that split step. I think that that'll form part of what we'll, I'll try and sort of in, in, like in, implement in my plan um, and sort of go go into a bit more depth and try and just try and um, again just improve it and make it almost as you say like part of your muscle memory. So you know that when you're in that position and that shots you know set to play, that you know that it's not like oh you know I don't know which way to to um, like swivel, you know, you know, okay, I'm getting the right position straight away, and it's not mm -hmm. to be like almost a second thought. So, yeah, that's yeah. Um, I think, I think what my final thing, I think more or less, um, 
it just sort of links back to what I think you maybe you touched upon it before, um, and how when you said about when you play the black the backhand, um, you almost because you know you've you've been sort of play put into that position to play the shot, you you lose position on the course and you almost mm. um you almost become disadvantaged to the guy so you, your opponent becomes the person in charge of the rally. Um, do you feel it's you find it difficult to get back into the rally once you've sort of suffered that, that initial um, stumble, would you say? Yeah, I'd say at that point, what like once you're, it's nice with the backhand in one sense that you know you're behind. Mm. So you don't have to think, oh, I could do something from here. Like if it's somewhere else on the court, you can kind of trick yourself in the moment and you can, make yourself believe that you're controlling the rally and they're not yeah. when actually you're wrong like they're controlling the rally but you're just you're thinking you are and then you try too hard to do something and you either lose the point because it goes wrong or it's not perfect enough and it goes over the net but because they're in control of the rally they just win the rally because they know exactly what you're going to play because yeah. they've limited yeah. your options um with the backhand because you know that because everyone knows if you're on that backhand there, you are in trouble. Your only thought is survival. Um, and it almost helps as well in the sense of, because everyone knows it's about survival, if you do play something they're not expecting, because typically it'll be the straight drop or sometimes a cross drop. But a lot of the times, like it's the straight drop or the straight clear, basically, yeah. that people play. Uh, the straight clear can go horribly wrong because it ends up just being like a mid-court clear that then they smash on the floor. Mm -hmm. So that's always a terrible option. And if you're lucky enough to be really strong, you might be playing in a slow hall or with slow shuttles or you might miss hit it. So mm -hmm. it's still not a safe option on any day for anyone, really. Um, yeah. It's an option that people use, and I myself use it quite a lot but it can be a bit of a can of worms um, if it goes wrong and it can very easily go wrong. And if it goes wrong, then they step up the court and then, because they know you're not going to try the clear again. And then they're basically mm -hmm. stood on top of the net, towering over it, waiting for you to play your straight or cross drop. And then they're just yeah. like killing it off the tape. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, you're in trouble there basically. And the often the tactic often is just you get it over the net, you try not to give them anything they can do something with. So you don't put pace into it, but at the same time you don't play it too tight to the net. Because if you played it and it's like flying over and then just dropping behind, they can come in and play a tight net shot that just does that as well. And it's the short flight time problem again. They can when they get to the shuttle, it just has to do that and it's over the net and dropping. Yeah. Whereas you actually have to move all the way in. So you typically, with that backhand, you get out of trouble, you just play it so its flight comes in and over the net and into court, and then they don't have pace to whip it around, and they're not tight on the net to play like a tight shot. Um, and because you've got out of trouble, then they're there thinking, I want to finish the rally, and they put more pressure on themselves, and then you're there going, right, I've survived the backhand, I now am kind of neutral they're not in control, I'm not in control. We're yeah. both just waiting for someone to, either they're gonna do something or they're gonna mess up and then let you do something. So it can save, it can save people. You can win the rally yeah. from the yeah. backhand, from you playing something that's such a like nothing shot that they try and force it and then you win the point because they've tried too hard, if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah, you, you feel the pressure because you know if you don't deal with it right, you've lost the point. But if you do deal with it right, you're either just back in the rally and it's neutral or mm -hmm. they're giving it away to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they have a perfect sense. And again, it's another, just um, specific for an for analysis that like you refer to that as sort of like dynamical systems, um, which essentially is, a perturbation, which which is basically a, a good shot from your opponent, or a mistake that allows the other person to like capitalize on mistakes. Basically, what you just described in there. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's really 
mm. you know, re really interesting. Um, it's yeah, um, good. Um, I think yeah, I mean, I think we've we've covered all areas. I think I've got you know what I can use and take forward from you, um, and hopefully implement something and design something that's helpful mm -hmm. for you and provide you a good service. So thank you very much, Nathan. No worries. Um, and we, yeah, so we'll just start the recording. Um.